What's up, you guys? I'm back. I told y'all I was coming back with another video real quick. So, um, <laughs> so yesterday I did a video about the whole Gucci blackface <sighs> ad campaign, whatever. So, if you have not checked it out, make sure you check it out, okay? But um, this video is just um, just a quick, really, really quick video. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about the importance of mental health um, in your personal and physical lives, okay? And we're definitely going to take spirituality out of this because sometimes we need to take spirituality out of it. Now, I know as much as I want to be normal... I'll never be normal again. Just be real. But I do want to tell you guys just briefly about um, what started my journey to want to go into therapy. And basically, um, you know, what I'm in therapy for. Okay. So, um, for those that know me personally, but for those that don't, um, I am adopted. I was adopted at the age of nine months. But I've always had issues with connecting to my family, um, just because obviously, you know, my family is not my blood family. Um, so a lot of uh, separation, um, not separation anxiety, but a lot of like anxiety issues due to um, socialization, um, being able to connect on an emotional level, but also um, transparency. Um, I have a lot of issues with transparency and being open and honest with people, not in such a way that I'm lying, but in such a way because I'm always protecting myself. I always walk around with a shield because I always feel like, you know, I have to protect myself um, from people who, you know, are not genuine um, or not real. Uh, I also, I have a lot of issues with um, expressing my feelings towards loved ones, um, especially to like, you know, friends, um, friends and family for a lot of various reasons um, but I also have noticed over the years that I have a lot of ups and downs um, drastic changes from hot and cold I'm never lukewarm it's always w one extreme or another with me um, and you know I also have suffered from um, periods of depression um, last summer I went into a mild depression uh, after I closed down my store um, and then over the past like few years not really knowing what my life purpose was and not understanding still to this day really who I am as a person because again you know the connection the disconnection of blood family um, you know really being able to understand who I am especially after I had Kennedy because um, you know, Kennedy, I, I, I'm not able to, you know, give Kennedy like, you know, background of her blood family, so to say, except for her father's side. And she's really not close with, um, she's close to her father's side, but she's not like as close as she is per se, as she is with my family. So with that, or with my mom's family, I should say, um, with my side. So with that being said, um, you know, with the mild depression and all these things, um, I also have, you know, and even up until very recently, um, have, you know, suffered with um, suicidal thoughts, um, not even towards myself, but towards um, other people as well. I, I know I look innocent, <laughs> but don't let the looks fool you, sis. Um, I have definitely made, you know, very firm threats to people um, in my day. Um, you know, even using weapons as well. <laughs> um, so I have definitely resorted to violence. Now, as far as me, I've, I've never really gotten in fights. I haven't gotten in a lot of fights in my life. I'll be honest with you guys. But, you know, I ha I definitely, I snap. When I say I snap, um, I go from cold to hot in about zero to three seconds um, in no time, basically. Um, and I have... Um, you know, I have definitely, um, you know, pulled weapons on people, um, in heated arguments or heated debates, um, you know, as well as also, you know, trying to protect 
um, myself as well as other loved ones. Um, and so with that being said, you know, I, I knew that I had issues, mild issues with anger, but also mild issues with being able to really control my temper. All right. Um, I also know that I have, you know, a lot of issues with staying consistent, um, but also with being motivated all the time. A lot of times I will be motivated and then all of a sudden I will be, I'll become not motivated. Um, and so you guys probably know where I'm going with this. If you understand, um, if you understand like, uh, like mental illnesses and you understand, um, you know, mild mental illnesses, um, and clinically, clinically, um, I've never been diagnosed as of, as of, until as of now, but you know, I always knew that I suffered from some sort of, um, bipolar. All right. And so, you know, I always knew that, but I was never actually diagnosed with um, manic bipolar. And, you know, I have finally been clinically diagnosed. Now, some people will say, oh, you know, you know, we don't believe in the medical field, this, that, and the third. Um, you know, and I don't either necessarily, but I do believe in getting outside help sometimes in order to really... Um, be able to pinpoint, you know, where you need help the most in your life. Um, and what I know is that a lot of people do, obviously, Christians, is that they turn to Jesus. All right. They, they turn to white baby Jesus. And, you know, I am not taking that route, obviously. Um, and so between my own spirituality, um, you know, my own ability to heal myself, and my beliefs on that, um, you know, I realized that I can no longer do this on my own. Um, I can no longer suffer in the dark and think that it is okay and think that it is healthy to battle with these things. So with that being said, um, you know, I have accepted the fact that, you know, in years since probably I was like 13, um, you know, I have definitely known that I have been some sort of bipolar, okay? There's different levels of bipolar. I'm on a very, very mild case, obviously, but, um, you know, because of my, my, um, my different, my different, like, times of depression and, you know, sometimes the anger that I, I possess, um, which has definitely calmed down a lot, and a lot of it was due to the fact that I was self-medicating myself, i.e. marijuana. Um, and because I've been 30 days, a little bit over 30 days clean now, um, you know, I'm obviously going through different detox, detoxing, um, you know, things like that. But what I'm noticing is that, you know, I'm very irritable. Um, I'm very, very irritable. I've been having headaches like crazy. Um, you know, just a lot of the things that goes along with detoxing off of marijuana or THC, okay? I smoked high levels of THC, so I was smoking that loud, okay? <laughs> I was smoking that loud Pacquiao. Um, and so I did, I've, I've been smoking for probably almost 20 years, maybe a little bit over 20 years. And I've never gone cold turkey the way I have now. Um, but I knew that it was time to really take a step in my life and really make a change for the good. Um, and I knew that, you know, smoking those high levels of THC was altering my mind state in some sort of way, but it was also allowing me to cope with a lot of the issues that I was dealing with in life. Um, and this, this video is in no way or shape or form to lay my issues on your shoulders. But I have realized that, you know, again, um, you know, the mental health, um, awareness of mental health is so low when it comes to, um, you know, people, period, but also um, on the African, in the African American community. Um, a lot of us avoid therapy and we avoid these things um, because we don't want to be looked at as, you know, crazy or looked at as, you know, insane or, you know, looked at as insane. Uh, you know, not being stable. But, you know, I'm definitely not ashamed to come out and to be a voice of, you know, reasoning, but also a voice of, um, 
of influence, you know, um, just with me coming out and telling you guys about, you know, my therapy, I've had a lot of people that have contacted me and said that they too, um, have been looking into going to therapy. Even my mother, um, is looking into going to, and going into therapy. And I told you guys that I thought my mom was a narcissist. I still do think she is a narcissist, but I also do believe that she may suffer from a mild form of depression as well. Um, and so with that being said, you know, there's so many things that go on in this world. There's so many issues. There's so many underlying things that we go through in life. So many things that we go through as, you know, young children and things like that. And we really, a lot of us, especially black people, we don't have a voice um, or we feel like we don't have a voice um, in order to speak out um, and to speak up for ourselves. And so I'm definitely encouraging, you know, those out there or whoever, you know, is watching this video that, you know, if you feel like you are having... Or if you feel like you need someone to talk to or having issues that you need someone to talk to and you don't want to talk to a friend or a family, because we know that friends and family can be judgmental, even though they said they're not, they are judgmental. So that's why I chose to go to a therapist, because I needed someone neutral that doesn't know me and doesn't know my situation, um, you know, to be able to guide me and to give me guidance based on that neutrality, you know, based on, um, you know, what they've studied about the human mind and, you know, behavior um, patterns of humans. Um, and, you know, at this point, I'm not on any medication. <laughs> um, and I have refused any type of prescription medication as well. Not that it has been offered to me, but I have refused it up front. Um, but the one thing I do want to um, do want to try maybe in the future is maybe getting like some type of medical card, um, you know, in order to actually purchase marijuana legally um, and use it um, as the doctor prescribes for, you know, any type of um, heightened anxiety um, issues because, you know, we are always going to live life. Life will never be perfect even after therapy. But th at this point, all I want to do is be able to deal with my issues um, better without having them completely stress me out or completely send me back into a depression or send me into anxiety. Um, you know, I don't know if anyone has ever had an anxiety attack, but I've had a few in my lifetime and they are not fun at all. Um, so, you know, again, it's not something that I suffer from on a daily basis, but I know because I was self-medicating, um, you know, smoking marijuana, uh, two or three times a day sometimes that I know that I was able to handle different issues better, um, you know, because of the, um, because of me feeling, you know, a certain type of way. So anywho, you know, I just wanted to come in and let you guys know, um, you know, exactly what is going on with me. I probably won't be back for a little while, but I do just want to let you all know that I will definitely be back to update you guys on my therapy, how everything is going. Um, literally this, I, I completed one full week now, or I've completed one, two, three, I think I've completed about five, four or five sessions of therapy so far. Um, and so it's more just like, you know, the, the prerequisite type of things, you know, just getting um, all the analysis done. They have to obviously clinically diagnose you based on the questions that they ask you. Um, and just after a few sessions, they do clinically diagnose you so that they have some type of basis in order how to treat you. Um, because you just can't go in treating people just for any old thing if that's not what they're suffering from. So, um, you know, at this point, um, I'm being evaluated for an intensive outpatient program, which will include group therapy as well. Um, obviously, I'll be doing one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions as well, too. Um, and then I will also be seen by, um, you know, a medical doctor that will evaluate my health, my overall health. <clears throat> the one thing I do do is I do see the doctor regularly. So, um, you know, this is something that obviously, you know, is not out of the ordinary for me. I'm, I, I do go to the doctors, um, but I do refuse medication. Um, so, yeah, um, the only medication that I have at this point is an EpiPen um, because I do have um, very um, deadly allergies to a lot of things. Um, I have to keep an EpiPen on me. So I do carry it faithfully. Here's my EpiPen. Um because again, I have a lot of deadly um, um, allergies that, especially like with foods and stuff, so I have to keep it on. But other than that, y'all, I just wanted to come in and just really kind of let you know, you know, what exactly is going on. Again, a lot of you guys have reached out to me, so I appreciate your support and your love and all your kind words and obviously your encouragement, um, you know, 
I had a couple of people tell me, you know, you don't know how strong you look. And so y'all don't know how strong it is for someone to ask for help when they're in the midst of, you know, being ashamed of asking for help. So never be ashamed to ask for help. Um, never be ashamed to speak and live in your truth. Um, and this is something that I've obviously been speaking about and working on for almost like two years now. Okay. So I'm definitely, 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 you know, once I really get to my healing and I get in a lot, a, a more stable place, um, I do want to come to you guys and really create a platform for mental health um, that will be, you know, obviously, uh, um, it will obviously be um, cohesive with my spiritual um, work that I do as well, because mental health is so important, especially for the black community. We have been through so many things ge generationally, um, you know, even down to slavery and having, you know, um, a lot of things taken away from us from, you know, Gucci and Prada and all these other brands, you know, um, in our faces, um, exploiting us and, you know, putting us down, um, you know, just, it's just so much things, so many distortions of music, all this affects our brain waves and the way we think and the, the way we act and the way we react as well. Um, and so one thing I've learned um, up until now in therapy is not, it's not, it's not what you say necessarily, it's how you react and, um, you know, how you say things when you are in the midst of being upset or whatever that may be. Um, and it's also about, you know, really taking the time to breathe and really think thoroughly through um, the actions in which I'm going to take before I actually take them. Um, because a lot of times I just snap and I just, I go off a whim. Um, things just irritate me quickly. Um, I'm very like, I can be very high strung sometimes, so it just depends on what's going on in my life and how stressed out I am. But because I live with my mother and a lot of issues lie with my mother, um, you know, I have a lot of deep rooted issues when it comes to her and how, you know, she raised me the things that I saw um, when I was raised. I was never abused physically, but, you know, I was definitely emotionally deprived. Um, but also, you know, my mother was emotionally deprived as a child as well. And so a lot of these things have rubbed off on me, not to mention whatever is genetically in me because my birth mother um, did heroin and various other drugs up until her second trimester with me. Now, I don't know how that has affected my health overall. I'm a very healthy individual. But, you know, again, you know, whatever trauma that the mother goes through in the womb, the child then takes on that trauma. And even though I was not raised by my birth mother, you know, those things stay within your body. They stay within your DNA. So if you understand this and you will understand that because I don't know my birth family, I do not know exactly what um, my birth, what runs in my birth family, if depression runs in my birth family, if suicide runs in my birth family. I, obviously, we know that drug use um, runs in my birth family. So... These are just things that, you know, over time, I'll really be able to connect with myself. But, you know, obviously at this point in my life, you know, searching for my birth parents and really connecting with my birth family is something that's very important to me that I really need to do to kind of, um, you know, open this chapter of my life so that I can really, you know, get to the heart of healing myself. So I'm going to just leave it at that, you guys. I got to go to work as always. About to finish my mascara, but I love you guys so much. I am doing well, you guys. So don't be, you know, don't be whatever you want to be. <laughs> don't be sad. Don't feel bad or whatever. Just continue to keep me in your meditations to uplift me, um, you know, and my mental health journey. But yeah, you guys, let me tell you, looks can be deceiving. A lot of people feel like, you know, this person, that person has it together. But, you know, that's why I always tell you guys to check on your strong friend. I am the strong friend. You know, I am the one who is always mentally strong, but who is internally and emotionally deteriorating. Um, and so it's time for me to really step up and, you know, take care of myself. So I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. And remember, mental health first.